Once winter rolls around, you might feel like you have to hang your backpacking gear up for five to six months because you've been lied to and told that you have to spend a fortune to get winter backpacking gear or have dedicated gear to avoid freezing your butt off. But I'm here to tell you that in most cases, those things just aren't true. I'm convinced that you can enjoy winter backpacking on a budget. Let's get into it. What's up, Dirt Junkies? My name is Jeff. Thank you for stopping by Dose of Dirt. About a month ago, I asked you guys if you had tried winter backpacking, and if not, what was stopping you? I love that almost half of you had done winter backpacking and said that you loved it, but there was also a significant portion of you that said you wanted to get into winter backpacking, but it just seemed too expensive or you didn't have the right gear. So I want to address that head on today in this video. You absolutely can get the right gear and it doesn't have to be expensive. And while yes, it's easy to drop some serious cash on some winter backpacking gear, in most cases, I just don't think that it's necessary. Oftentimes your three season gear can work just fine if you do it right, layer up, or take other strategies to enjoy the backcountry during the winter. I should also note that what winter backpacking like will vary greatly depending on where you live. The gear that I'll talk about today has taken me down to as cold as 10 degrees Fahrenheit or what is that in Celsius? Let's check. 10 F to C. Negative 12, it is negative 12. Now, depending on where you live, that might sound like summer temperatures, or you may never even want to think about going out in temperatures that cold because your winters don't even get close to that cold. But it's important to note that because I know from other comments that some of you are in Canada and it gets much colder than that where you might have to use different gear. And some of you live in areas where it doesn't ever get that cold. So important to note going in that this gear has taken me down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what winter backpacking is to me so far. I'd love to know in the comments where you're watching from and what the coldest winter backpacking trip you've been on or how cold it gets during the winter. Now, before we get to the big ticket items like sleep systems and tents, let's talk about some other items that you'll need to use in the winter whether you're spending the night in the backcountry or just enjoying a day hike or trail run. First up are the all-important base layers. These are base layers that I've used on several backpacking trips, day hikes, and trail runs and they were cheap. I picked up a two-pack of bottoms and a two-pack of tops from Costco I'm pretty sure for $10. I've got a picture of the receipt somewhere. I'll find it and include it in the video. But I actually found that you don't have to purchase these through Costco. You can buy them directly from the company. They're slightly more expensive, but still very cheap. And they also have some different thicknesses. Mine are the thinnest ones that they sell, but they also have a mid-weight and a fleece lined if you really want something a lot warmer. It's really easy to drop 10 times that much on a good set of base layers. So far, these have been great for me. In fact, when I tested two sleeping bags and sleeping pads for winter backpacking, I'll include a link to that video right up here, these are the base layers that I wore and they kept me warm in my sleeping bag down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Get what works best for you, but you don't have to spend a fortune. I will include a link to these and everything else I talk about in this video down below. Is that like weird? Flip it around your underwear? Yeah, flip yeah. it around my underwear. Now let's talk about some great mid-layer options. My most recent purchase or gift from my wife is this awesome quarter zip, again, from Costco. What can I say? Costco's got cheap stuff for a good price, but you don't have to go to Costco. What you want to look for is something that's just a little bit thicker and is made of synthetic materials. This one cost me $20. Has a nice little shark logo on the chest. I like that. And this is really warm. If it's gonna be cold outside for a run or a hike, sometimes I'll put one of those thin base layers on and then this over the top of it, and that keeps me nice and toasty warm, especially once I get moving on the trail. So only $20 for this, and when combined with those inexpensive base layers, keeps me nice and toasty warm. The other thing that I've used on several backpacking trips is actually a free jacket from my work. Now, you might laugh at that and say, well, my work hasn't given me a free jacket, but I have been to the thrift store several times and I've seen a lot of jackets with company logos on them that are made of synthetic materials and could be very warm. You can pick those up for $5 if you don't have a free one that you've gotten from your job or something else sitting around the house. Think about the gear that you already have and whether it would work. Just don't use cotton. Look for something made of synthetic materials. All right, we've talked about base layers and mid layers. Let's talk about outer layers. This is my, you guessed it, Costco puppy jacket. I'm a little bit embarrassed about how much of this gear has come from Costco, but that's the way it is. Nice gear for not a lot of money. 
This has been a great puffy Ooh. coat that I've taken on several winter hikes and no, backpacking no, trips. No, no, no. It has worked great. It cost me, I think, about $30. But if you're not into Costco or don't have one near you, another fantastic option is the Decathlon Puffy. The one thing I don't like about this one from Costco is that it doesn't have a hood on the back. And I was really close to pulling the trigger on ordering a Decathlon Puffy for just $55 if you get the synthetic fill for purposes of this video. But I realized this puffy still works great, so why would I order a new one? I may get one eventually because this one does seem to lose some of its puffiness, but it's definitely still got some life in it. So I'm gonna hold off on getting another puffy because I'm cheap. So that's what I wear as an outer layer on the top. Let's talk about bottoms. During the winter, I wear my exact same budget hiking pants, $23 pants from Walmart. They're synthetic, comfortable, dry very quickly, and are actually fairly water repellent. I really like those pants. I did a full video on them. I'll put a link to that right up here, but I wear my exact same hiking pants during the winter as I do during the summer. The last thing I'll talk about as far as layering goes is a waterproof shell. This is my Frog Togs rain jacket. I know you can get very expensive shells that work during the winter that have some additional insulation, but for me, I've just found that that's not necessary. When I put this on top of my puffy, my other mid layer, as well as my base layer, I am super warm, in fact, too warm. I only wear all of those layers when I'm just sitting around camp. You can get a set of jacket and pants on Amazon, I think for about $30 if you go for the frog togs and they work great at repelling the water from the snow or rain for your top as well as your bottoms. You can slip them right over your hiking pants. The Frog Togs rain gear has worked great for me for winter backpacking as an outer shell. All right, so we've talked about clothing and some nice budget-friendly items that can work there for all of your different layers. Let's talk about footwear. Now, admittedly, I am still figuring out the waterproof footwear situation. I will say that I have ordered some waterproof boots that I wanna try out. Those unfortunately are not very cheap. I ordered the Zero Shoes Alpine boots. They're about $160, but waterproof footwear for hiking is just expensive. I'll let you know how those boots work out. I wore some non-waterproof trail runners on my last winter backpacking trip and my feet were cold. But my brother had a perfect budget-friendly option for keeping my feet nice and dry, even when I was putting them into frozen trail runners. After putting dry socks on, I literally put my feet inside a gallon freezer bag and then put that inside of my shoe. And it kept my feet super dry, super warm. So if you're looking for a super budget-friendly option, there you go. The other thing that's important for footwear in the winter is micro spikes. Now you can spend a lot of money on a pair of micro spikes. I think there's some popular brands out there that are $70, $80 for a pair of micro spikes. These are from a company called Energetic Sky. They were about $25 from Amazon and they have worked great. They fit my feet well. The spikes give me lots of traction on ice, snow, anything else. They've been very durable because sometimes you just come across places where you have to step on rocks to get across streams and they haven't broken yet. I've been very happy with these budget micro spikes. They've worked great. That's the small stuff. Let's talk about those big ticket items, tents and sleep systems. First step, tents. Now, if you're climbing Mount Everest or doing some serious mountaineering, you need a very expensive four season tent. I will tell you that in my winter backpacking, I do not have a four season tent. I have always used a three season tent while winter backpacking. On a recent trip with my friends, Justin and Brandon, we used this three person tent from Bestport. It is not light. It's about six pounds, but there was plenty of space in there for all three of us. And it worked fine for winter backpacking. It was about 10 degrees warmer in the tent than it was outside. It's a double wall tent and it worked great. And I think it's only 80 or $90 on Amazon. So you do not have to spend $500 for a winter backpacking tent, unless you're going to be encountering conditions that really warrant that type of tent. I know for me and my winter backpacking, this tent has been more than sufficient. And the same goes for Best Sports two-man tent. I enjoyed the three-person tent so much that I actually bought their two-person tent as well. I used this with my two Huskies in temperatures that were definitely below freezing and it worked great. And lastly, although it's not cheap, I think that it proves the point. My Z-Pax Triplex, which is basically the definition of a three-person tent, because you're sleeping in what almost feels like just a bunch of saran wrap that's been stitched together. That Dyneema is so thin, but on this last winter backpacking trip, it snowed quite a bit and the Z-Pax Triplex held up great. Again, I realize that's not a budget-friendly tent, but I share that with you to prove the point that you probably don't need a four season tent in most of the conditions that you'll be encountering. At least I know that's true for me. Now let's talk sleep systems. 
there are some nice budget-friendly bags out there that can take you down to some pretty cold temperatures. The first one that I bought was this one, the Teton Sports Leaf Zero Degree Bag. I have taken this bag down to the low 20s with some additional layers on. I got it for $55 off of Amazon. I think right now it's about 90, but it seems to fluctuate between 55 and 90, depending on when you purchase it. This is a great budget option for cold winter backpacking trips, if you know what you're getting into and the kind of layers that you should wear to be warm inside the sleeping bag. Since I knew I'd be hitting some colder temperatures than that, and I didn't want to have to worry about wearing multiple layers in my sleeping bag, I also purchased the Perea Outdoors Thermodown Zero Degree Sleeping Bag. And this bag has been fantastic. I've taken it down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It is pricier at about $170. As far as zero degree sleeping bags go, $170 is a really good deal. You can pay three, $400 for a zero degree bag. I really like this one and it's very budget friendly. The other thing that's important to note about sleeping bags is that if you don't want to buy a dedicated cold weather sleeping bag, you can actually just layer them up. You can get something like the Teton Sports Leaf and then use another sleeping bag that you have to layer on top of that. Just unzip it all the way and put it on top of you like a quilt and you'll have that additional warmth, additional loft from that other sleeping bag that can help keep you warm. I do recommend testing that maybe in your backyard or somewhere where you have close access to your car so that you don't end up in the backcountry with a system that won't actually take you as cold as you were hoping. Those are the sleeping bags. Let's talk about sleeping pads. My favorite sleeping pad for the winter is the Perea Recharge XL. If you watched any of my other videos you probably already know that this is what i've taken on my winter backpacking trips and i actually did a video comparing this to another budget-friendly winter sleeping pad i'll put a link to that right up here this has an r value of 4.5 and has kept me warm well below zero which is fantastic and the other thing i can do if i want to go even colder than that is actually layer this sleeping pad with a Thermarest Z-Lite or other closed cell foam pad. This one cost me about $45. There's kind of an off-brand version on Amazon called Red Camp. I haven't tried it. It looks to be basically the same and it probably is. I should tell you the Perea Recharge XL cost me 90, which is pretty good for a winter sleeping pad. So you don't have to buy one super expensive dedicated winter sleeping pad. You can get one that can get you fairly cold and then layer that up with a closed cell foam pad to get you even colder. You don't need expensive, dedicated winter gear to go winter backpacking. Before we wrap this up, if this has been helpful, I would really appreciate it if you just scroll down really quick and give me a like below. I would really appreciate it. That's what I have to share with you guys. If people have told you that you have to buy super expensive gear or have dedicated winter gear to enjoy the backcountry during the coldest months, you do not have to do that. You can use some of these strategies that we've talked about in this video to make sure you enjoy the backcountry all year round. Winter backpacking is fantastic. I highly recommend it. Remember, life is better with some dirt in it. And snow. And snow. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Is that good? Yep. Should I do it again? Nope. Okay, good. You stop it? Uh-huh. <laughs> good stuff. Something's going on upstairs. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. The dog might be dragging one of the children around. I don't know. That <laughs> No screaming though, so we'll assume it's okay. I'm repeating myself. I am not repeating, I'm not repeating myself. I'm not gonna talk about gloves. They're from Costco. I don't wanna say Costco again. <laughs>